After leading coalition forces to victory in the Persian Gulf War, General H. Norman Schwarzkopf, class of 56, pays a visit to his alma mater, the United States Military Academy at West Point, New York. On a bright and sunny day in the Hudson Highlands, the general's helicopter lands on the plane at the academy, where he is greeted by a classmate and the present superintendent of West Point, Lieutenant General Dave R. Palmer, and other dignitaries. The official party then heads for the superintendent's residence, quarters 100, with General Schwarzkopf returning the smiles and greetings of the assembled crowd of well-wishers. The general is obviously as delighted by the turnout as the crowd is to get a glimpse of their hero. When they arrive at the residence, General and Mrs. Schwarzkopf are greeted by Mrs. Palmer. With another wave to the crowd, they then head inside for a brief respite before the official ceremonies begin. A short time later, the general heads for the statue of General of the Army, Douglas MacArthur, for a formal press conference. Cadets looking out the windows of MacArthur Barracks get a thumbs up from the general as he passes by. At the press conference, General Schwarzkopf is asked about his education at the military academy. Well, the, my leadership training at West Point was the absolute fundamental upon which I built my entire career. Uh, I would tell you not only my leadership training, but a great deal of the military training that I received here. Uh, the fact that we had a great course then, and still do, called the History of Military Art, where we, uh, we studied the battles and campaigns of the great leaders and captains of the past, and I used an awful lot of that in putting together the campaign plan, so it was a combination of all of that. After the press conference, it's across the plane to the official reviewing stand and a greeting from assembled dignitaries and special guests. The Corps of Cadets is assembled on the plane in preparation for a special retreat review in honor of their distinguished guest. As Generals Schwarzkopf and Palmer look on, the official ceremonies begin. General Schwarzkopf, along with General Palmer and Cadet First Captain Douglas E. McCormick, then boards the official vehicle to review the Corps as a large crowd of military personnel and civilians looks on. Following the review, the color guard presents itself for the playing of the national anthem. Once again to the Corps, let me just say what a great honor it is for us to all be out here at this magnificent review today. And I would like to say to everyone in the stands, indeed I'd like to say to everyone in America, indeed I would like to say to our potential adversaries in the world, if there's ever any doubt in anybody's mind about the future and the strength of the United States of America, 
All you have to do is look into the eyes of these proud young men and women who stand before you, and you'll know that our future is indeed secure. Thank you. Now the core passes in review. the retreat review, General and Mrs. Schwarzkopf head for Washington Hall, the Cadets Mess Hall, where they greet the senior officers of the Corps of Cadets. The General then heads for the balcony overlooking the Mess Hall for a tumultuous greeting from the Corps. Following dinner, everyone heads for Eisenhower Hall, where the general addresses the Corps and answers questions. If you leave here with the word duty implanted in your mind, if you leave here with the word honor carved into your soul, if you leave here with love of country stamped on your heart, then you will be a 21st century leader, worthy, and I do mean worthy, of the great privilege and honor that you will have, whether it's at platoon level, company level, battalion level, brigade level, division level, corps level, or theater level. The great honor and privilege you will have of leading the magnificent young men and women who are the sons and daughters of America, who are the thunder and lightning of Desert Storm. The following morning, it's time for nostalgia, as General Schwarzkopf visits the company to which he belonged as a cadet, A-1. He visits his former room, now an office, and is given a plaque by the members of the present day A-1. Returning to Quarters 100, General and Mrs. Schwarzkopf join the superintendent and Mrs. Palmer for breakfast, after which it's time for farewells. Emerging from the superintendent's residence, the general greets representatives of the New York State Police and the Military Police Detachment at West Point, as well as several others who had gathered to see him off. A small group of cadets that had assembled to pay their respects to the general and his party received personal greetings. Cameras were in abundance as several of the cadets got souvenirs of the occasion. Now it's time for the former classmates to say their formal goodbyes and for General Schwarzkopf and his party to board their helicopters for the flight to their next engagement, leaving behind a slightly breathless West Point community a community used to special events and special people, but somehow almost overwhelmed by the bear, General H. Norman Schwarzkopf.